Welcome to Game Name Here. Hopefully you've already had a chance to enjoy the offbeat perspective and new game mechanic of Portal. To listen to a commentary node, put your crosshair over the floating commentary symbol and press your use key. To stop a commentary node, put your crosshair over the rotating node and press the use key again. Some commentary nodes may take control of the game in order to show something to you. In these cases, simply press your use key again to stop the commentary. Please let me know what you think after you've had a chance to play, as we think we are just at the beginning of taking advantage of this type of gameplay. I can be reached at gaben at valvesoftware.com. Thanks, and have fun! Science Computer Aided Enrichment Center. We hope your brief detention in the relaxation vault has been a pleasant one. Your specimen has been processed, and we are now ready to begin the test proper. Before we start, however, keep in mind that although fun and learning are the primary goals of all enrichment center activities, serious injuries may occur for your own safety and the safety of others. Please refrain from the portal will open in three, two, one. One of the things we learned from Narbacular Drop, our student project that became Portal, was that players often thought portals took them into other spaces, or even other dimensions. To help fight that notion, we start players in a visually unique room with memorable objects, so that when they walk through a portal for the first time, they have a clear point of reference, which communicates the idea that they're still in the same basic location. For instance, the radio, which is playing an instrumental version of Still Alive, helps as well by providing some audio continuity. It's absolutely critical that players quickly wrap their heads around what a portal is. We noticed early playtesters grasp the concept much more quickly when they caught a glimpse of themselves through a portal. So we deliberately positioned this first portal to ensure that players will invariably see themselves. We put the player character in an orange jumpsuit to reinforce the fact that she's a test subject. Visually, the warmer colors helped her pop out against the colder tones of her environment. Some playtesters were wondering why she could fall so far without getting hurt the way she would have if she were in Half-Life 2. In response, we added a mechanized heel spring to her lower legs. Afterwards, there was no longer any question about why she could survive such long falls. These frosted glass observation rooms make the player feel as if they're being watched at all times while keeping the identity of these watchers a mystery. The rooms serve a practical purpose as well, since we often use them as convenient and logical light sources for the test chambers. Portal is effectively an extended player training exercise. We spend a huge portion of the game introducing a series of gameplay tools, then layering those tools into increasingly difficult puzzles. This layering starts here, where we train the button and box mechanic, before introducing the more complicated concept of portals. Excellent. Please proceed into the chamber lock after completing each test. First, however, note the incandescent particle field across the exit. This aperture science material events a patient grip will vaporize any unauthorized equipment that passes through it. For instance, the aperture science weighted storage cube.
Please place the weighted storage cube on the 1500 megawatt aperture science heavy duty super colliding super button. We wanted players to feel safe while standing in a portal, so we never kill them or destroy objects within a portal that's closing. Instead, we either push or teleport objects out of a portal as it closes. to the chamber lock as the effects of prolonged exposure to the button are not part of this test. We very deliberately introduce and train each gameplay concept in Portal, so that once players reach this spot, we're confident that they know what a Portal is and roughly how it works. Early versions of the game let players stumble through the beginning, without always understanding what was going on, which really compromised teaching new concepts. The puzzle you just finished was designed so that stumbling around will almost always lead to a dead end. Completing the puzzle requires walking through a minimum of five portals in a specific order. This kind of gating, in which a solid understanding of key gameplay concept is required for success, helped standardize the learning curve of the game tremendously. is not part of any test protocol, but is an unintended side effect of the Aperture Science Material Emancipation Grip, which may, in semi-rare cases, emancipate dental fillings, crowns, tooth enamel, and teeth. In early versions of this map, playtesters would charge down the stairs without noticing what was creating the portals. We introduced a mandatory pause in the action, what we call a gate, to help ensure that players stop and notice the portal gun making the blue port. A particle effect and a loud noise help draw their attention. Very good. You are now in possession of the Aperture Science handheld portal device. With it, you can create your own portals. These intradimensional gates have proven to be completely safe. The device, however, has not. Do not touch the operational end of the device. Do not look directly at the operational end of the device. Do not submerge the device in liquid, even partially. Most importantly, under no circumstances should you... Proceed to the chamber lock. Mind the gap. This room was designed to make players understand that entrance and exit portals aren't tied to the color of the portal. Playtesters often assume that orange portals were exit only, so we created this puzzle to force players to enter an orange portal. When rendering the player's view through a portal, we must render a separate image using a virtual camera which looks out of the opposite portal. 
To obtain a correct image and efficient rendering performance, we render only what is visible through the limited field of view of the opposite portal and exclude objects which lie between the virtual camera and the plane of the opposite portal. Well done. Remember, the Aperture Science Bring Your Daughter to Work Day is the perfect time to have her tested. The combination of portal-destroying fields, which we call fizzlers, and the elevators serve a dual purpose. They provide a clearly identifiable endpoint for each test chamber, while also addressing the more practical problem of how to keep players from portaling across level loads. We eventually integrated the fizzlers into several of our puzzle designs. Welcome to test chamber 4. You're doing quite well. For training purposes, there's generally just one correct solution to these early puzzles. The original version of this room didn't have the glass barrier. Playtesters would often stand on the button to open the door and then shoot a blue portal through the opening, bypassing the box entirely. Since this puzzle was meant to illustrate the relationship between boxes and buttons, that solution, while clever, was a failure. So we added the glass barrier to prevent it. Later in the game, however, the puzzles become more open-ended. Integrating portals with Source Engine's physics system was a complex process that required several iterations to achieve the right balance of performance and correctness. Because portals can be placed virtually anywhere in the game's environment, the physics system had to be modified to allow dynamic changes to its representation of colliding geometry, such as the walls and floor around this box, and any objects which may lie on the opposite side of the portal. Initial implementations of this dynamic collision generation system could take up to one half of one second, or 500 milliseconds, to compute the correct collision. This may not sound like a long time in everyday life, but this pause during the portal creation was quite noticeable in the context of a game. Ultimately, we designed a system that creates temporary hybrid physics environments in bubbles around the portals, using less accurate collision than that produced by Source's standard collision generation, but was accurate enough in practice and reduced the time to create dynamic collision representation from 500 milliseconds to just 10 milliseconds, which is an imperceptible pause during portal creation. Once again, excellent work. As part of our required test protocol, we will not monitor the next test chamber. You will be entirely on your own. Good luck. To ensure the safe performance of all authorized activities, do not destroy vital testing apparatus. Early versions of Portal featured more detailed, cluttered environments, much like Half-Life 2. We quickly realized that unnecessary objects scattered all over the place distracted players to the point where it actually interfered with the Portal training process. So we simplified the art style to favor clean, focused test chambers. The modular approach we settled on makes it look plausible that the chambers can reform dynamically on these pistons. Do not destroy vital testing apparatus. As part of a required test protocol, our previous statement suggesting that we would not monitor this chamber was an outright fabrication.
Good job. As part of a required test protocol, we will stop enhancing the truth in three, two, While safety is one of many enrichment center goals, the Aperture Science High Energy Pellet seen to the left of the chamber can and has caused permanent disabilities such as vaporization. Please be careful. To make puzzles deeper than just teleporting to the exit, we had to include surfaces that won't hold a portal, which are formally introduced here. We experimented with several surface designs before we settled on this one, whose visual noise and reflectivity make it easy to identify at a distance. Unbelievable. You. Subject name, here. Must be the pride of. Subject on down, here. Warning devices are required on all mobile equipment. However, alarms and flashing hazard lights have been found to agitate the high energy pellet and have therefore been disabled for your safety. Good. Now use the Aperture Science unstationary scaffold to reach the chamber lock. Originally, these scaffolds ran on electrified tracks, but crafty playtesters would hop along the rails to the exit, bypassing the puzzle entirely. We tried to solve this by killing players as soon as they touched the rails. That solution ended up being too much of an overcorrection, as even skilled playtesters were getting frustrated by these one-hit kills in the more complex puzzles later in the game. Making the scaffolds run along immaterial beams of light solved both problems. Please know that we have added a consequence for failure. Any contact with the chamber floor will result in an unsatisfactory mark on your official testing record, followed by death. Good luck! Even though layering player training was a design goal from the start, we still ended up introducing some concepts too quickly. For instance, this used to be the first energy ball redirection puzzle. Playtesting revealed that this puzzle introduced too many new concepts at once which ended up frustrating a lot of playtesters. In response, we inserted two test chambers before this one to make the energy ball redirection training more gradual. previously talked about how we handle static portal collision, but collision with moving objects on the other side of a portal is a completely different and equally hard problem. Walking onto this scaffold was a very iffy proposition for the first few months of development. We solved the problem of colliding with these dynamic objects by cloning the objects from one portal to the other and strictly controlling what objects are allowed to collide with each other and how they're allowed to collide.
very impressive. Please note that any appearance of danger is merely a device to enhance your testing experience. The Enrichment Center regrets to inform you that this next test is impossible. Make no attempt to solve it. Because our test chamber environments were simplified for training purposes, we created visual hotspots within the rooms to guide players' attention. The design is essentially a balance between round objects and sharp objects. The sharp objects representing background elements and the round objects, such as doors and movable props, comprising our points of visual interest. The Enrichment Center apologizes for this clearly broken test chamber. For the first few months of development, we rendered the views through portals to two off-screen textures. This approach was easy to implement and was compatible with a wide range of graphics hardware. Unfortunately, this method was incompatible with anti-aliasing and consumed a large amount of video Once memory again, in order to handle recursive views through several ports. Because of these disadvantages, we switched of this to a unsolvable system which renders portal views recursively into the frame buffer, with the aid of the stencil buffer to isolate pixels corresponding to a given portal. This is a more effective scheme because it is compatible with anti-aliasing and does not consume any additional video memory for off-screen textures. Fantastic. You remain resolute and resourceful in an atmosphere of extreme pessimism. To reiterate, previous morning, you test an episode of Portal Momentum. Portal Momentum ended up being the hardest concept to convey. For this series of puzzles, which went through more design iterations than virtually any other part of the game, we introduced the idea of redirecting your momentum using portals slowly, step by step. We even have the AI voice pretty explicitly explain the elements of the puzzle, something we avoided throughout most of the rest of the game. Certain objects may be vital to your success. Do not destroy Choosing gravity to fall into one portal so that you come rocketing out the other portal, a skill we call flinging, was another difficult concept to train. We designed a specific visual cue, a pushed out concrete block with checkerboard tile above a pit, to indicate to players that it's time to use the fling maneuver. Repeated several times, this cue helps players associate pushed out concrete slabs with flinging, in much the same way that players learn to associate cubes with buttons. Spectacular. You appear to understand how a portal affects forward momentum, or to be more precise, how it does not. Originally, these exit portal surfaces were static geometry in the final position, but playtesters stubbornly refused to look up to find them. This is another example of the classic game design problem of coaxing players to look up. By putting the portals on moving pistons, we were able to start them in a position that players were more likely to see. Momentum. A function of mass and velocity is conserved between portals. In layman's terms, speedy thing goes in, speedy thing comes out. 